Naval Ravikant, founder of the $4 billion company AngelList, stands out in Silicon Valley not only for his business success, but also for generously sharing his financial wisdom and life philosophy. Number one is to seek wealth, not money or status. Status is a hierarchical zero-sum game where someone has to lose for you to win. Avoid playing this game because it often leads to anger, bitterness and envy. Naval is very clear here. There is nothing inherently wrong with money, but it's the desire for more money that can be harmful for you. Unfortunately, there is no magic amount that will make the desire for more money disappear. Naval encourages us to seek wealth instead. By focusing on building wealth, we can achieve financial independence, personal freedom and design a fulfilling life. Building wealth is the best way to free ourselves from the endless comparisons that come with seeking status. Avoiding lifestyle inflation as you earn more money is the best way to keep the desire for more money in check. Number two is to change your definition of retirement. For Naval, retirement is when you stop sacrificing today for an imaginary tomorrow. There are three different strategies to achieve this. The first strategy, have enough assets in your investment portfolio so your passive income can cover your monthly expenses. This path is detailed extensively in my blog and also in several videos of my channel. For example, the one on the 4% rule of thumb. The second strategy is to drastically reduce your expenses to the point where it feels like you're becoming a monk. This is an extreme example. And of course, Nadal here is half joking, but the idea is clear. Many people work to cover ever increasing lifestyle costs that don't actually increase their happiness. The third strategy is Naval's preferred method. And it is to do something you love so much that it is no longer about money. When you find joy in what you do every day, you're retired according to Naval's definition. You're no longer sacrificing today for an imaginary tomorrow. Number three is that you won't get rich by renting out your time. Naval believes that if you don't own a piece of business, then you don't have a path towards financial freedom. If you're paid for your time, it's hard to earn the money you need to buy your freedom. Without owning assets, your income is just too closely tied to your working hours. In other words, your input is too closely tied to your output. What does this mean? It means that if you're renting out your time, you're not earning while you sleep, you're not earning while you're on vacation or when you're in retirement. You earn only when you work. And in this way, it's difficult to grow your income and wealth in a non-linear fashion. Instead, Naval recommends building or buying equity in businesses. You can do this by owning stocks, but Naval believes that real wealth comes from starting your own company. Number four is to arm yourself with specific knowledge. Find what it is that you can uniquely offer. Specific knowledge is something you can't be trained for. It's based on your unique talents and passions. If society could train you, it can also train someone else to do it. You find it by being yourself, by using your innate talents and by following your genuine curiosity and passion, not the latest trend. Specific knowledge is often highly technical or creative and is not something that can be outsourced or automated. According to Naval, specific knowledge is crucial for building wealth. Number five is very important and it's to use leverage. Building wealth requires giving society what it wants but doesn't yet know how to get. Leverage can provide this at scale and can come from three different sources, capital, labor, and products that have no marginal costs of replication. To raise money, you need to apply your specific knowledge with accountability and good judgment. Labor is the oldest and most fought over form of leverage, but Naval actually recommends that it shouldn't be our primary focus. This form of leverage will definitely impress our parents, but it's messy and requires huge leadership skills. Finally, products with no marginal cost of replication would be digital goods like software or online content that can be duplicated and distributed to more users at virtually no extra cost. Examples here would be books, media, movies, or code. Tip number six from Naval is to be accountable. Take full responsibility for your actions and their outcomes. Be transparent about your contributions and ensure that your reputation is tied to the results you deliver. Society will then reward you with equity. We are socially hardwired to not fail in public, but Naval argues that failing in public will actually gain you a lot of power. In his book, Naval emphasizes that accountability is a form of leverage. By being accountable, you demonstrate reliability and build a strong reputation, which are key components in achieving long-term success and wealth. Number seven, if you can't decide, the answer is no. Should I take this job, buy this house, start this business, invest in this stock? In modern society, we are flooded with options. We aren't biologically built to handle so many choices. Remember that when you choose something, you often get locked into it for quite a long time. Naval recommends that if you can't decide, the answer is no. 
If you feel like you have to make a list of pros and cons, the answer is no. Focus instead your energy, time and attention to where the decision is clear. As promised, here's my favorite takeaway from Naval, the one which I think can guide almost anyone towards achieving financial freedom. The most powerful idea for me is to focus on building wealth and to avoid chasing status or money. Many people spend their lives seeking the admiration and respect of others, and they tend to do this either by playing the status game or the money game. These games can provide short-term satisfaction, but unfortunately, they won't bring peace of mind. The goalposts always keep moving. In the status game, you always have to be vigilant because status is something that can be lost. It's also something that's relative to others, so not fully under your control. And in the money game, the chase is never ending. If this is your primary focus, then there will never be enough of it. To break free from these games, we should play instead the wealth and freedom game, focusing less on what others think and instead spending less and saving and investing as much as possible. In less time than you think, you achieve a place of financial independence where you're no longer tied to a paycheck and you can truly design life on your own terms. And if you want to excel at the freedom game, I fully recommend Morgan Housel's bestseller book, The Psychology of Money, which we covered in last week's video. If you watched until here and found value in today's video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe to our channel for more content. All right, take care and see you in the next video.